You are now tuning in to the Mind Body Podcast, where fitness experts and life coaches share their secrets on taking your mind and your body to the absolute best. This is the advice you wish you heard years ago. Get ready and take notes as we expose the raw truth behind achieving amazing natural physique and strength and ultimately become a stronger version of yourself. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Mind Body Podcast. I'm your host, Lido Dayan. And today, like always, I had a chance to talk with another great leader in this world. His name is James Swanwick. James is a New York-based ESPN anchor on Sports Center, author of Insider Journalism Secrets, and CEO founder of international agency Croc Media. He has been a print and TV journalist for 20 years, writing for newspapers and magazines in the US, UK and Australia. James and I talked about several topics, such as the power of having mentors in your life, reading books and the importance of giving without the expectation to give something back. I honestly believe you can learn a lot from this interview, so please get fully associated and engaged, absorb everything you can and don't just listen to me cause you will not remember anything if you just listen. Sorry, I might be emotional sometimes, but I do it cause I really want you to be fully engaged and not just passively listen to me. Anyway, so without further ado, let's begin the interview. So thank you, James, one week uh, for uh, being in my podcast. You're welcome. Great to be here. So uh, before we start, I would like you to introduce yourself for people that might uh, not uh, know who you are and what you do. So my name is James Swanick. I'm an Australian-American investor and health uh, expert, I guess you could say. I used to be a newspaper reporter and then I got into the entrepreneurial world and I now help social drinkers quit alcohol for 30 days through my 30 day no alcohol challenge program and then I also help people sleep better with my uh, my sleep company Swan Week Sleep and if you can see me rather than just listen to me I'm wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses um, called Swannies from my sleep company which helps you sleep better and we can talk a little bit about that later but uh, yeah, living over here in New York City at the moment, um, a proud Australian American and uh, very much into uh, health and uh, health and business. So, what uh, made you start being in uh, health uh, business, like? Well, I was always just a social drinker, so I didn't drink that much alcohol, but I drank enough, sort of in my twenties and thirties to. Uh, get to the point where I'd put on a little bit of weight and my skin was dry and I wasn't sleeping very well and I just felt tired and sluggish all the time. And so I ended up running an experiment and I quit alcohol for 30 days and I felt so damn good that I thought, oh, I'll just keep on going. And, you know, I lost about 13 pounds of fat. My skin got better, slept better. My relationships improved. I started lifting weights in the gym and getting fit and healthy and, and, that kind of just set me down a path of learning everything I possibly could about health, about fitness. And then when I learned all these things, then I just started teaching people this, everything that I learned. I, I started my podcast, the James Swanick Show podcast, which is all about health and fitness. And then I created businesses around health and fitness just because I had an interest in it. Do you think we all need like to get into a pain moments? Because most people that actually made breakthroughs in their life uh, got into point that they had it, right? Do you think it's crucial in our life to have this kind of moment in order to grow? Uh, it can definitely help. In fact, there's a book called The Happiness Hypothesis by a New York professor called Jonathan Haidt who says that the most successful people in life many times suffered great trauma at some point in their life. But in order for us to truly learn and in order for us to be truly motivated, We have to either like hit rock bottom or have some kind of traumatic experience or get overweight or have a heartbreak. We have to have that kind of pain and suffering in order for us to, to, for that to trigger an emotional response to want to then go and 
change the situation or learn or get fit or get healthy or quit drinking or learn about relationships. So um, I don't... I, I do think it's critical. I don't. I, I don't think it's necessary. Like I think you can motivate yourself to change without having to go through trauma, but it can certainly be a great motivating factor. Yes. And uh, if you could take us uh, like three major things from all your interviews or interaction with others that you truly believe. Uh, at the most uh, long-term impact on your personal and maybe professional life, what would it be? Yeah, well, I think just getting mentors is the most important thing. Um, I got a mentor, uh, uh, an online entrepreneur called Ty Lopez, and I paid him $25,000 for him to coach and mentor me over 18 months. And that really sped up the process for me learning how to run a business and be a business owner. Before I hired him, I was trying to figure out how to be an entrepreneur on my own with an only very limited success. But as soon as I hired a mentor, as soon as I got a mentor, the speed with which I learned how to make money as an entrepreneur increased exponentially. So I would say the number one thing I've learned is, is to get a mentor or get mentors. Second skill that I think I learned um, was the skill to, to read a book a day. So imagine putting you know the knowledge of the great minds into your head every single day. And so me being able to learn how to speed read and how to extract amazing knowledge into my brain from reading a book a day really increased my, my knowledge exponentially as well. And there's a YouTube video where I teach you how to read a book a day if you just type in in the YouTube James Swanick, how I read a book a day, you'll be able to see that and you'll be able to learn learn from that. And then um, third thing I learned really is uh, habits, the power of habits. So little habits can have a profound impact on your life. For example, I exercise, exercise five or six times a week. And one of the habits that I still do every night before I go to sleep is I get out my exercise clothes, my shorts, my shirt, my shoes, my socks, my water bottle, my gym membership, and I put it on the floor at the end of my bed. So when I wake up in the morning, I see the gym clothes. They're already ready. They're ready to go. And even in that moment, if I really don't want to go to the gym, because I've already prepared it, because I'm seeing the visual cue of my exercise clothes, I put them on. And nine times out of 10, I walk out the door and I go and I exercise, even if I don't want to in that moment. Mm. That's the power of a habit. That's the power of a habit. And then I created this program called the 47-Day Habit Hacker Program, which is you know all of the best habits that I've learned from people like um, Elon Musk, the billionaire who owns Tesla and SpaceX, and um, John Bon Jovi, the, the, the rock musician who I interviewed. Um, uh, all of these successful people, I put them all into that 47-Day Habit Hacker Program. So yeah, the third thing I would say is instill great habits into your life. Do you think uh, like uh, there is a difference like how your brain is uh, getting books or audio books or if we watch something because a lot of people say yeah reading the book some people when they read the book their mind is automatically going to some something else so do you think there is a difference like if you uh, read listen or watch something? Yeah I, I, look Whatever works. If you only can can learn by audio, then just listen to audio. It's fine. If you can only do it through visual teaching and videos, then, then do it through videos. Um, do it all. Try it all. Like if you absolutely hate reading a book, then okay, then don't read a book. Try to listen to the audio book for it. Um, what I will say is this though. Like studies have shown that we only retain about 10% of whatever it is that we learn unless we then teach what we have learned. And mm. if we teach what we have learned, we retain 57%. 57, of what, 57, yeah. So what I like to do is whenever I read a book, I will then pull out my iPhone and I will record a little YouTube video and I will teach what I learned in that book. And that, not a, that has you know, many uh, great effects. One is I get to share what I've learned, but two, I actually get to ingrain in my brain what I have learned. So I, I'm actually selfishly 
teaching others so I can retain the information. Mm -hmm. Because studies show that you retain 57% of information if you then teach what you have learned. Yeah, it's like uh, getting yourself a leverage, right? Because we all need some sort of leverage in order to do stuff. And I think YouTube is a great source for me. Like, I'm a YouTuber myself, and I know that when I put stuff online and I tell people that I'm going to do something, that it automatically makes me do it. Because then, like, okay, I put it out there. Just like Conor McGregor always says, like, when I'm putting something out there that I'm going to do it, then it's drive me. It's like, make me want to do it more. That's right. So uh, you said like reading a book a day. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about the process? Like how do you absorb the book? Uh, because many people think like, oh my God, reading a book a day. Well, it, it means like I need to read 200 pages. So how it's like reading a book? Because it's not just read it, right? Yeah, well, I can read a book a day and I do that by speed reading. So if you go to my YouTube channel, James Swanick, and type in how I read a book a day, you can, you can learn how I do that. But just to give you the short version, I will read the back of the, uh, back of the book, I'll read the chapters, I'll skim the last page of each chapter, because in many cases they'll give you, um, you know, a great summary of what that chapter entailed. And then I will go back to the beginning again and I'll go through the book from... Um, and I'll be skimming through and I'll kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I can see what he's trying to say there. Because a lot of these nonfiction books, they'll make their point in the beginning of the chapter. And then they'll give all these examples to prove their point during the chapter. And then they'll summarize that on the last page of each chapter. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you can just read the first part of a chapter, the last part of a chapter, and then move on without actually having to go through all of those examples. Remember... We only retain less than 10% of what we read. So what is the point of spending two weeks trying to read a book if you're only ever going to retain 10% of what you learn anyway? Better to skim through it, get the main points, coach it, teach it, and then move on to the next. So I would just encourage you to, just to go and watch that YouTube video because it'll, it'll show you me reading a book and... Um, and, you know, you can really increase your learning exponentially doing it that way. I also heard that, like, if you are engaged when you do something, like, if I watch a video or I read a book and I'm more physically engaged, I move my body or I, I speak it louder, then automatically it can make it even 80 to 90 percent, no? Well, if you, if you assign physiology to when you're learning, then your memory is able to retain that information even more. So, for example, if someone teaches you something profound, you could jump up and down in the air and scream and do a little song or, you know, sing your favorite song, and your your body and your your, your physical body, your, your physiology, will more than likely retain that information or create a memory path whereby for the next five to ten years you'll always remember jumping up and down and singing. Mm -hmm learn that particular piece of information so yes you can absolutely do that if you a lot of times if you write you hand write out your notes as well you retain more information rather than typing there's some there's a power that comes from actually like holding a pen and writing something down um, sometimes I will uh, record conversations that I have with people with their permission of course like I might be in person and someone might be giving me some advice and I'll say my I record this and I'll say sure so I'll record it and then I will, I'll listen back to it, but then as I listen back to it, I'll also transcribe it. And sometimes they speak quicker than I can actually type the words down. Mm -hmm. And so I have to pause and then type and then like play again and then pause. I like doing that even though it's laborious and tedious. Because I'm doing that, I'm focusing on the words. I'm listening, I'm typing, I'm rewinding, I'm listening again, I'm typing, I'm listening, I'm typing. And then, you know, six months later, I can go back to my notes and, and read them again. Like, I'm, there's repetition there. I'm, I'm forcing this knowledge into my brain. Yes, and yeah. I, I truly believe, I like, uh, there is also, if you attach emotion to something that uh, you are learning, is so much more valuable because information without the right emotion is uh, just information you won't really remember. It's like I'm asking you, do you remember what you did on the 9-11? Most people will know what they did in that particular time. Why? Because there was emotion attached to it. 
So if we can get to a really emotional state while we're trying to learn something, let's say finance or in investing, if you are not in a place that uh, your money is really important to you, then you will just read something and after, like day after you won't really remember. But you actually experience like uh, a lot of uh, maybe bad stuff from money, then now you're in the right motion, then you will absorb everything. Absolutely, yeah. Assign emotion to anything that you're learning and you will retain that information. It's a great point. I remember where I was September 11, you know. Mm -hmm. My parents remember where they were when John F. Kennedy was shot. There's emotion around that. So you, you, you remember when your girlfriend broke up with you. Mm -hmm. You remember when your boyfriend dumped you and your wife left you. Like You remember that. So if we can assign the same level of emotion to, to other things in our life, we'll, we'll, our chances for um, remembering that will, will increase. I think uh, the, there is a lot of, uh, you know, anchors. Like if you anchor yourself when you are in the right state and you put something, let's just physically, like I'm pump, clump in my chest or do something like that, so automatically I can trigger myself to feel in a different way. So if I want to read something and I'm like in a lousy state, so if I have this anchor that I'm clapping my chest, automatically I get myself into that state. Terrific, I like it. What else works for you? Tell, tell me more. Um, I, I really believe in the power of think intentions. You know, where you say something with enough repetition, but you don't just say like, yeah, I'm happy or I, I'm strong. Like you said, and you use your body and you really move it and you demand it from yourself so the more you say it so uh, you actually start to believe that who you are yeah and it's something i, like I practice I like every day the power of the power of uh incantations animations, yes um, manifest manifestations visual cues i like to put a photo of um handsome well-dressed men on my fridge mm -hmm. so I can because I, I want to aspire to be a handsome well-dressed man so I might I put a picture of, of Daniel Craig the actor uh, who plays James Bond looking very smartly dressed and so I look at that and I go hmm that's me I want to have that stature as well and so that visualization makes me play into that role so when I'm out I do dress well and I have my shoulders back and I I think about being a man he's kind of 40s or you know, having that kind of that, that stature. Mm -hmm. Likewise, if you're wanting to lose weight, put photos of, of guys with six pack abs on your fridge and then and also get into a community of other men, if you're a man obviously, who want who already have six pack abs because you learn by osmosis. If you can put yourself into that environment of those people, you will ultimately lose weight and be healthier because your visual stimuli and your environment is filled with people who already have what it is that you're trying to obtain. Yes, and I truly believe more, most people live in just reaction. They react to news, they react to everything that's happening around them that they uh, actually forget to design themselves for life. And if you really want to take charge of your life, so you got to be really uh, like known what is coming into your ears because whatever comes into your ears every single day, is what will shape your destiny and if you are constantly like uh, I believe in can I which means uh, constantly and never ending improvement if you always try to become better and always like uh, be aware of what's getting into your head then nothing can stop you in your life absolutely yeah I like that I like that a lot uh, also you you talked about the power of mentoring so what do you believe is uh, maybe the simple but most valuable things you learn from your mentor? One of the most powerful things I learned from my mentor uh, is to stop procrastinating, to just, nothing has to be perfect, you just have to start. So a lot of people will, will procrastinate on making big decisions in their life, like making changes, starting a business, quitting a job. Um, saying I love you, divorcing someone, like people will just procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate. What my mentor really taught me was just start, begin, do something, take action, and then that action will create momentum, and then momentum will end up getting you whatever it is that you want in life. So uh, I don't wait for the perfect time anymore. I just take the time that I have and I start, and that's perfect. So 
A lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to start this business in a year and I'll start preparing for it now. No, just start it now. Like, just begin now. Start getting it out there. Start getting feedback. And and then amend and polish as you go along. So not being perfect is a, is the perfect way to start. Yeah, a lot of people, I think, think uh, that they're trying to change a behavior they have. But uh, it's something I learned from Tony Robbins. He said, like, if you're trying to... Uh, like change a behavior but your your identity of who you are is not changing then eventually you are going to sab sabotage yourself again and go back to that behavior because uh, if let's say you are procrastinating and you truly believe in your identity that you are a procrastinator then you will get back to being a procrastinator and most of us just ju like try to avoid what the signal behind that procrastination because we don't just procrastinate. We, it, it's a signal that uh, our brain is trying to give us. So because like most of us, when we're trying to build a business, right? So we have a lot of hours in the computer, or a lot of hours we, we feel alone. And when we procrastinate, I believe it's a signal that uh, we have that need of connection, connection and love. Mm, yeah, I like that a lot. I like that. You, you, it sounds like you've studied a lot of what Tony Robbins Oh my says. God, a lot. Every day I hear him. <laughs> For hours and hours. Like he's constantly like in my brain every day. Yeah, I've gone and seen Tony Robbins speak three times at the Unleash the Power Within. He's terrific. And in fact, uh, a, a, a friend, uh, sorry, someone that Tony Robbins mentored, a guy called Eli Wheelhide, is one of my very good friends. And so whenever I uh, meet up with Eli, it's almost like I'm having a mini Tony Robbins mm -hmm. with him because everything he talks is just kind of like, like Tony Robbins. What, what's been like one or two main things that you've got from Tony Robbins that's changed your life? I believe uh, the power of questions because uh, what we ask ourselves every single day, consciously or unconsciously, is eventually uh, direct our, our destiny. If I always ask myself, like why all of this happened to me or why my life isn't working the way I want them to work. So your brain is like a computer because you did this, this and this. But if I like consciously demand for myself to ask question like, how can I get this better? What didn't I do yet that uh, if I do right now can improve my life? So if I always ask myself better quality questions, eventually it will get my brain to to seek for an answer the right answer yes yes i like that a lot that's great uh, another question i have for you uh, for a beginner that uh, building his brand how, how valuable is collaborating with influencer and what do you believe you did different that made uh, that made very well known people to want to interact and help you grow so i have there are two groups of people in the world. There's you and then there's everybody else. And without everybody else, you're going to be a very lonely person in the world. So all of my success has been attributed to a combination of me and people who have been able to help me. And so when I go into any new relationship, whether it's a platonic relationship, a social, a business, a romantic, I'm always thinking, how can I help this person? How can I give value to this person? Instead of what most people do and what I was actually guilty of, of doing back in the day was thinking how can this person help me? Instinctively, that's what we do, right? Like we, we kind of yes. like we're out for ourselves. We, we want help. We, we kind of we need help. And so we're like, how can this person help me? Well, if you can change that and just think how can I help this person and then do anything you can to help that person, those people in time will end up being the people who help you grow your business, who help you get fit and healthy, who introduce you to your future wife or girlfriend or husband or boyfriend, who support you, who encourage you. But they're only going to do that if you help them first. And so what I like to do is I like to just, you know, whenever I meet someone new, I'm like, how can I give this person value? I'm going to help them. And I do that. And then it's just, and I never ask for anything in return. I don't ask for anything uh, I don't expect it, but guess what? I end up getting lots in return because the rule of reciprocity kicks in and human beings always want to help people who help them. Um, and it just creates great 
it creates goodwill. And then so you create this life of people like helping one another, giving value, receiving value, and then you can do joint venture deals and build businesses together. You can create great social relationships. So always go into a relationship thinking, how can I help this person rather than thinking, how can this person help me? And still, if you are still trying to give them value, but some people like, if, if I try to give you value and I try to help you, how can I do it in a way that you don't think like, wh why do you think I need help from you? So don't ask for anything in return. I mean, people email me all the time because they know how to do this now because I've been speaking about it on my podcast, mm -hmm. the James Swanick Show. They send, me, uh, they send me articles or help or introductions, and at the end they say, no need to reply. So they don't ask for anything in return. They're just like, give me to me, no need to reply. And I'm like, cool, thank you. And I remember that. And then later on, sometimes, might, might be days, weeks, months, could be years, I'll always remember that. Um, so as long as you are giving value and you do not expect anything in return, mm -hmm. then the, per the recipient can only feel that that's a good thing. And here's the thing. If what you're giving, what the value that you're giving is beneficial to that person, that person is, is going to want to help you. They're going to say, please, tell me, how can I help you? Please, I want to help you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, last question that I have is, what is the legacy you would like to live long after you won't be here? That's a question I always ask people before I have the conversation. Well, selfishly, my legacy, I want to make sure that my offspring, that my children will go on and that they'll be healthy and that they'll be able to survive and that the people who I love most in the world, my bloodline, uh, are taken care of. So um, that's first and foremost. Um, after that, I would like to have uh, inspired a million people to have taken a 30-day no alcohol challenge. Um, and I would have liked to have inspired one million people to have slept better because of the coaching and the education that I've put out into the world. So my legacy, I guess, is to take care of my immediate family and friends first, and then uh, the general masses of people um, second. Great. And where can we find you? Yeah, if you go to jameswanick.com, and I'll spell Swanick because the spelling's a little unusual. It's J-A-M-E-S-S-W-A-N-W-I-C-K. So it's spelled Swanwick, even though the second W is silent, it's pronounced Swanick. Um, and if you want to learn about the 30-day no-alcohol challenge, you can go to 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com, or if you have trouble with your sleep and you want to learn some sleep techniques, go to Swanwick Sleep. Dot com and then I'm also on Snapchat and Instagram and at James Swanick. That's amazing, James. Uh, I really want to thank you very much for your time and uh, keep up the amazing work you do for others. It's really amazing, uh, like, uh, you know, taking people and take them out from uh, uh, drinking alcohol. So this is really, really valuable. So thank you. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me on the show. If you enjoyed this interview or any other one, from the Mind Body Podcast, feel free to subscribe to my podcast at iTunes, SoundCloud, and at my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share or leave a message at the comments below because your opinion is really important to me. Just like I always say, leaders create leaders, and we all here to grow together. For more information about fat loss, gaining muscle, and taking your mind to a whole new level, check my site at www.lidodayan.com. Till then, never, ever forget to smile. See you soon.